everybody is his perch. Um, I think that classic comic storytelling, it's the thing that I hear a lot of people say they want, including me. I want classic comic storytelling, but I'm not sure that everybody agrees on what classic storytelling actually means. Uh, you know, I, I think that here's what it doesn't mean. Maybe sometimes it's easier to define things in terms of what it's not. So for me, classic uh, comic storytelling does not mean, you know, complete and absolute denial of all politics. I think that there's plenty of classic stories. I always go back to kind of some of the things that Mark Grunewald did. Uh, but there's plenty of classic comic book stories that have, uh, you know, politics in them. It's not the, uh, the complete removal of politics. It's the sensible treatment of politics. It's where you feel like you're getting a story where the politics lend themselves to the story as opposed to a story where the politics are being preached and or yelled at you. That's the difference. And it, I, I would say it's a subtle difference, but the thing is I don't think it's that subtle. I think that just a lot of people are very bad at it. But even there, I, I started with politics, but I shouldn't have. To me, classic comic storytelling um, often has a lot to do with, you know, having issues go on for more than a year. Having, you know, it, here's this this crazy thing. Have you noticed? And I'm going to use one. A lot of people pushed back, but I'm I'm very convinced. Like the video I did on are people actually reading these comics? I'm convinced that a lot of people haven't actually read this thing that they're complaining about. So Mariko Tamaki is on Detective Comics. I don't think it's amazing. This isn't like a run for the ages, but it's not bad. You know, it's, it's one of the better runs that the comic has had for a while. And before you go, no, no, that's not true. I, I defy you to go look at some of the runs that we've had for a while. It, it's not bad. I think Tamaki's run is more solid than Tom King's run. And you may say, if you hate Tom King, that's not a big bar to, to go over. But, you know, consider how much DC hyped Tom King and everything else. You know, I, I think... I think her run is better than King's run. But you know why I think it's better? You know what I think the core reason is? It's kind of a sad one. It's it's just it's going. <laughs> it's it's it wasn't stopped in five issues. I'm not again, please don't misunderstand. I'm not holding up uh Mariko Tamaki as like the, the best storyteller in all of comics, but I'm saying when you give a writer the ability to tell a story over the course of, you know, a year or more, you get a better story than if the writer is told to do something in four issues, five issues, six issues, then we'll see, maybe there will be more, I don't know. You just get much better results. And if you look at Tamaki over in Marvel, what did, what did Tamaki do? She did um, She-Hulk, or I guess it was just Hulk, I, I don't know. It, anyway, they, they did, she did the Hulk issue, and then she did the... Uh, X-23 Wolverine, I believe. And, um, and then she did I Am Not Starfire. Um, what is, and, but, and, and Detective Comics, a handful of other things in there. But what's the difference between all of those and Detective Comics? Well, Detective Comics is a true run. She's on the comic. It, it, there's not an end in sight. She's able to just tell a story. Again, I don't think it's an amazing story, but it's remarkable how people who are not huge fans of Tamaki still look at that and go, oh, I, this is clearly her best work. Is it that she suddenly radically changed as a writer, or is it that when presented with long-form storytelling, something that naturally most people in comics want, better results occur? When I say people in comics want this, I'm talking about the customers, not, not the creators, although the creators also want this, but the, the customers. When I say classic comic storytelling, I mean I'm going to pick up a comic and I'm going to invest myself in it, and then I'm going to pick up the comic again the next month and again the month after that, and I'm going to do this on a, on a regular repeated schedule for years. That's really what classic comic storytelling is all about. I, I think that that's... that's it, it is it is amusing. And, and by the way, please think about it. Think about the comics that you actually love. Think about the ones that you're reading and you enjoy. And think about the ones that, you know, kind of when your interests started to die away. Now, a lot of people pointed to, oh, social topics came in. The comics got woke or not woke or whatever. It, there's a lot of, of those kinds of things in there. But if you look back at 2016, 2017... 
in Marvel, for example, where a number of people point to that time period and they say, things got worse here. Well, what are some things that happened there? Uh, well, number one, the relaunch rebooting mania kicked into high gear. There was suddenly a lot more of it. How much more? 60% more. 60. 6 zero more. Limited series and shortened comics, meaning comics that uh, may have been launched as ongoing but were canceled in under 12 issues, skyrocketed. Suddenly, what was about 20% of the line became 70% of the line. No kidding. That number gets hidden and is a little bit deceptive because you think, oh, that can't possibly be true. Look, they launched a bunch of ongoings. Yeah, but if the ongoing was canceled or rebooted in under 12 issues, guess what? You've got a limited series on your hands. And that's what shifted. That's the biggest thing that shifted in terms of the comics that were out. They changed from long-form storytelling where comics would just kind of go on and, and on and on and, and you, you kind of get invested in the story or you wouldn't. And they transformed themselves into very short-term blip type stories. There's a very, it's a very distinctive difference that took place. And, I, you know, it, it's to, to the, frankly, I think to the huge detriment of the comics themselves, the publishers shot themselves in the face by doing this. It dropped sales, it dropped interest. If, if you look at the huge difference between the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, even the 2000s, and then the 2010s, that decade, the biggest thing that changed is that the longer runs and stability of creators on comics dramatically decreased. How, how much? I mean, again, I, I'll, do, I'll run the math for you. It's one of the upcoming sales analysis videos, which is less on a specific title and more on the industry as a whole. That was a major change that occurred in comics. The deceptive part is that people point to the 90s and say, yeah, yeah, well, look, you know, Image uh, frequently, frequently had books that never made it, you know, very far that, you know, were, were it never made it to 10 issues. And that's, that is true. A lot of Image books did get canceled early or just, or didn't, didn't even get canceled, just seemed like the creator just got bored and stopped doing the comic. That definitely happened a lot. And guess what? Image suffered from that massively. The funny thing is the math doesn't actually change. The, uh, the comics got significant, I mean, the image, for all the hype and the attention and the, the growth that occurred, um, it, it, image took a pounding in the late 90s, early 2000s. I'm doing the Spawn sales analysis, and, and you like to think of Spawn as something that's selling you know, 250,000 copies, doing great business, and all the rest, and that was certainly how it started. But by the time you got into issue 40, 50, 70, the comic was selling terribly, just absolutely terribly. And part of, you know, that was, that was I, I, while Spawn continued, you may be saying, well, wait a minute, you're, you're proving the opposite of your point. No, look around at the other things that are happening within Image. Image as a brand, as a publisher, a lot of those books petered out extremely quickly. And it had a halo effect, a negative halo effect on Image as a whole, and I think comics as a whole. Now we're in this period where Marvel has moved to a very similar practice, where comics get abandoned very, very fast. And sure enough, it, it's hurting. It suffers. In the, it, the, everything's suffering. So when I talk about classic comic storytelling, the biggest thing I talk about is you know, giving creators comics, runs, however you want to classify it, giving it breathing room, letting, letting this stuff actually play out, giving them the chance to, you know, tell their story. I think that, uh, that, that, it, that would be a major, major improvement to comics. If you could do that, if you could basically just give things a little bit more patience, I think you would see a dramatic increase in sales prices and, and customers and attention and retention, all the, all the things that we like, you would see all of that. So, Anyway, classic comic storytelling, I think, gets mixed up in, you know, the, the glory days when the boobs were super big and the men were muscly and the feet were non-existent. I mean, <laughs> I'm joking. I, 
anyway. Uh, but th those were all kind of things that certainly, uh, you know, they, they get talked about a lot. But what doesn't get talked about as much is, you know, there was an actual attempt to build a business, to build longevity with these comic runs, to have, you know, length. You know, <laughs> I was about to make a very dirty joke. Anyway, it was better then. And a return to classic storytelling, for me, means, in many cases, give people more time. Not obsess about, you know, social issues or politics and all the rest. Yes, those things are often uh, frustrating, usually, again, because they're done poorly. And that's the, the biggest, uh, you know, red herring here, the biggest issue, is that when those things are, you know, are done, they are often done awful. You know, the, the nuance of politics in Watchmen is a hell of a lot different than the, uh, the nuance of politics in, you know, Ghost Spider or Voices at Marvel. It's a, it's a major change. And, you know, I, I, if, if all the politics are being done with kind of the care of comics in the past, I think everything would be fine. Anyway, let me know what you think. What does classic comic storytelling mean to you? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And thanks for listening.